made of bright steel, from the root of the Menno tree, and forged by the elf Brunan. This week we build Brissinger from the fantasy saga Inheritance. We found this image online and sized it to the length we wanted. And after designing the hilt and handle in CAD program, we printed them out on our 3D printer and used them as reference for the blade size. We outlined our blade on some floor mat foam and then remembered our mistake during Guilty Thorn, we mark and cut the channel for our carbon fiber rod before we try and cut the blade out. Using a ruler, we can keep the lines nice and straight. We place the hilt and handle on the carbon fiber rod so we can mark and cut it to length. Then we add the contact cement and glue the rod in place. Once the rod is in, we cut the blade shape out and do a test fit.
To make sure the sword blade is as flat as possible, we add a strip of 3mm foam to the rod. Then we trace out the blade on poster board. Cut it out and glue it. Now to center the rod on the sword, we add 1mm foam to one side of the blade and 3mm foam to the other. A little trimming and we have a blade that's now in need of edges. Once we add the blade edges, 
we have a rather large gap between the edge foam and the rest of the blade. To adjust for this and to give the sword the correct look, we mark down the blade and trim the blade foam to extend our edge. We hit it with a sanding bit on our rotary tool and get the edge we want. We tried foam clay on Guilty Thorn and it didn't turn out as well as we would have liked, so we're going back to our using our flexible spackle to fill in any gaps on the foam. In order to make the sapphire that goes on the pommel, we take a couple of Easter eggs and an old pencil and we create a template. Dave thought we should go big, but it didn't look quite right. After we have the rough shape of the egg, we cast a mold using a plastic cup for the frame and some silicone. While that dries, we sand our blade to give it a smooth finish so that it's ready for paint. Now that our silicone is set up, we take out the template so we can pour in the resin. Using a second plastic cup, we slide it over the mold to keep the mold closed while the resin sets. We mix our resin and add in the blue mica powder to give us the sapphire color that we want. Using an eyedropper, we can slowly fill the mold, making sure to tap it a few times to get most of the air bubbles out. We let that sit for 24 hours, then we can remove the plastic cup and pull the sapphire out of the mold. To clean up the rough edges and get the shape that we want, we take the resin rod that's part of the sapphire and we put it into our drill. Then using some sandpaper, we start shaping and polishing the sapphire. You can see it isn't perfectly center, so it wobbles quite a bit. We set the polishing aside for a minute and get our blade coated in Plasti-Dip 
and a metallic navy blue color. To achieve a Damascus look, we use a metallic ice blue acrylic paint and alter our brush stroke in differing circular motions. While that dries, we tape off the handle of the portion so we don't get paint on it, and we take it out to give it a coat of primer and silver. We'll apply the same Damascus look to the hilt and the handle. We start assembling our sword using some 5 minute epoxy. We glue the hilt to the blade and add our sapphire to the pommel. Then we wrap some leather around the handle and we're all set to go.